one one other thing is the gift shop, dude. The, the gift shop was dope, and it, and it and it was cool to see how packed it was in there. I mean, we, we didn't have anything like that at Qualcomm, you know. Yeah, that's for sure. I bought some stuff, and I don't know if I ended up taking it home or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did buy some stuff. What the hell happened to it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you bought like earrings. I bought and... earrings and like a toothbrush, you know. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Where the hell? It's probably in, it's got to be in your car somewhere, dude. Yeah. The toss to him. Can he get the edge? Gonna try. He's got it. Record time. Donnell Humphrey smashes the record. On the return. It's Rashad Penny, and Penny finds the seam. Penny to the outside. Penny will go the distance. First and goal. Fake to Penny. Open man. Wells. He leads. He gets the ball. And they say touchdown, San Diego State. Dingwell back to pass. He lost it up there. San Diego State University. All right, the guys are back. Welcome back to another Sons of Montezuma podcast episode. We are up to number 66. I believe this is the 66th episode in our history, and we are on the cusp of game week. James said it. Game week is next week. But today, this episode is all about the Dragon, the Snapdragon Stadium. This is your host, Mateo San Diego. I'm joined with El Capitan, K5 James. What's going on, James? How you doing? Yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? And we got the dirtiest of the Dans. D Morton78 is his Twitter handle. It's Dirt Ball Dan. What's up? Yo, 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 what's going on? <laughs> very very reserved on the yo's man <laughs> I'm, tired. I'm still tired <laughs> Dan's still recovering from from Saturday man that was a that was quite a day for the Suns Suns are out the Suns were out yeah so it was <laughs> Saturday was the big day the big first scrimmage ever in Snapdragon history the Aztecs took to the field and man, you know, it was it was a beautiful day. We had the live stream going. So definitely check that out. We put together a nice highlight video. Shout out to our YouTube page, Dan, right? You can go check out that highlight video, which is got all the angles, all the behind the scenes footage, because we got some behind the scenes footage. So credit to Dan, got, got to give him all the credit. You know, people were asking, how'd you guys get access down to the field club level? And, you know, neither of you guys had been to the stadium I, I had the luxury of actually taking a tour back in March. So I got a chance to walk through the grounds. Like it was still very raw construction. Like the seats were even barely getting in. So I was really curious to see your guys' reaction. I wanted to geek out and kind of see how you guys were going to take to just seeing everything up close and personal. Yeah, I think initially we were kind of nervous on how we were going to be able to set up. You know, we, we tried the caravan all together, but you know, you can't really control traffic on Friars Road and people are jumping in between all the, the caravan of cars we had. And then, you know, the, they kind of, <clears throat> I, th I think it's smart, it's great that they kind of steer you into a spot. That way there's not a lot of empty spots and you don't have to worry about people driving through. Because if you notice that, like hardly anybody drove through all day, man, while we were tailgating, which is great. Um, so I, I think that's a good idea and I, I like that, but I think initially we're just going to have to try to be outlaws to make sure we all get <laughs> all of us get in the same area so we can tailgate um but but the the view coming in man that stadium looks amazing just sitting out there and that we were on like the uh i forgot what side that is the south side of the stadium the yellow um, lot south lot yeah. yeah that yellow south lot and and we had like the the view of where the the sausage gets made like all the trucks deliver all the stuff <laughs> but even still man that looked it was like totally cool. And you could see like the backside of the pier from the parking lot. And oh man, it was just, it was amazing. The, uh, as James said, the, 
finding a way to caravan, that's going to be tough every time. We thought, and I knew this was going to happen when we were going, because even when you get in and you're going to where they get your parking, there's three different lanes, right? So, like, you know, if we're five cars deep, five cars in a row, someone could be the second car in, right? So they say Mateo's the first, Mateo gets past, and then the next person goes, it's in the second lane that none of us are in. So it's really hard. I mean, I don't, like what I did last time is I cut people. You know, I drove through an area that I shouldn't have done past cones. But um, it's going to be hard to have a series of cars back to back to back. And the way they do it, it's, it's tough, too, because they make you park behind each other as well. So we came up with a few game plans as, how we, as far as how we could create a little bit more space. If you are back to back and you guys know each other, you have one car pull up a little bit, have the other car um, pull up a little bit, do stuff like that. But yeah, once your lane is full, they close it. You could, There's actually like cones. You can't even go in there if you wanted to. Cruising that now, cruising like where James said, it's, um, it's just cool when you go by and you see all the nice grass. One day I'll be able to afford there and, and park <laughs> in the grass section. Kind of refreshing when you get to walk through there. I don't know how it is to walk through the side where it has all the dirt and gravel and all that stuff. I didn't get to do that, but going walking on the grass parking lot was just this nice. Um, probably be a little crazier this next weekend. A little bit more cars there, but it's, yeah, yeah. That that grass parking lot was almost empty this this time. Okay, well, before we go any further, you got to say a big thank you to everybody who actually did show up to the tailgate, stop by. Like I said, uh, you know, a lot of people came through at different times throughout the, the day because everybody wanted to go check out all the different, you know, views, all the different experiences all around the grounds. But it was really cool to, to see so many people, and, and I'm looking forward to many more on September 3rd. We're definitely going to stay there in that yellow lot, the Sons of Monty tailgate will definitely be there on the paved lot i was debating moving it to the to the other side to the east side but you know with everybody saying how how all the dust is kicking up in the gravel in those lots i think i think we got a good spot we're back by like where you said where, where, where the media and the teams and all the all the buses come in and so we wanted to put out there on twitter to kind of get everybody's temperature on on the stadium right and kind of get everybody's pros and cons what were the best parts what, what were the worst parts now, some of the worst parts, we'll go to the worst parts first. In that yellow lot where we're parked at, there's actually no entrance from there. And so everybody's scratching their head like, how do we get in there? I know I was on my scooter. Like everybody's trying to jump on top of my mobility scooter because my knee's all messed up, which yes, Dan, it's a it's a torn meniscus. Yeah. But we were like, how do we get into this sucker? So we had to drive on that left side where all the grass is because there's no entrance. But I think the main reasoning why there's no main entrance there is because that lot is technically not supposed to be there in the long run, right? That's that's all going to be campus. So it's they weren't going to, I don't think they were going to build a new entrance in, in these few short years that we have that lot there just for that. So, well, you know, it'll force us to walk around, but that's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. Yeah, we got to remember, we can't get in on that grass side either. That's specifically for that those clubs club. seats. So yeah. we have to go around to the gravel lot side to enter. Um, so anybody else parking in the yellow lot, you're gonna have to go around to the gravel side or all the way around to the north side. I don't think, I mean, you're just gonna keep walking past the club entrance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got the other people did with us. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh, other than that, like my biggest gripe is there weren't enough like porta potties in the yellow lot. I don't know how it was in the gravel lot, but in the yellow lot, there was like, porta potties in the corners on the complete far furthest corners of the lot you can get to there was just a bank of porta potties and the same thing with like dumpsters like we wanted to like clean up our trash but the only dumpsters they were actually locked too i think um they were over by the porta potties and that was it there was there were no dumpsters or trash cans around so those are two like little minor gri gripes i have about like the the tailgating scene outside well, yeah, dude, like for a handicapped dude like me, where am I going to go to the bathroom, dude? If I got to go, like, I, I, I'm glad I had the scooter because then I can zoom all the, like, that's a big parking lot, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's a walk for sure. Um, I don't know, maybe we're spoiled from, it seemed like Qualcomm, the parking lot had a, a spot every section. <laughs> but we're not that spoiled because even Carson, they had like that whole back area of lines of porta potties, you know? Yeah, that's true. Because there was like, there was only like four or five in that corner, in that corner, <laughs> you know, 
Yeah, hopefully they have more if it's on, on the actual game day. Yeah, maybe that, you know, because they didn't anticipate that big of a crowd. They just didn't set it up yet. What do you guys think about the marquee on Friars? Because I know we had to cruise through there in the front view. That's like the most visible view of the stadium on Friars, that marquee. Some people were saying it's kind of small. What do you guys think? I mean, it's cute. It's kind of small. <laughs> it's cute. I don't really, you know, I didn't really pay attention because I was too busy looking at the stadium and like trying to find my way in and stuff. People, you're going to see the stadium from Friars Road. Who cares if, how big the sign is? They're going to look and see the stadium right there. Well, I think those were the only three negatives that I got all on Twitter was people saying, okay, the, the gravel lot is too dusty. There's no entrance in that south lot. And the marquee is too small. And if those are the three things that we have to complain about as Aztecs fans, like that's a record. That's got to be a record all time high. Now, that's just from my small sample size of, of asking that question. I haven't been on Aztec Mesa to check uh -huh. out what everybody's saying. I haven't been on Facebook too, too much to see what the, the complaints are. But I'm I'll sure take the, that. I'm sure the beer was too cold and there was too much beer. <laughs> music was too loud. If you, if you look on Aztec Mesa, that's going to be the response. That, that was pretty much like outside it's beautiful it's beautiful it's amazing just like even we were just sitting there and you just look over the stadium and it's it's a sight to be held and uh yeah i i couldn't i was like pinching myself every 10 minutes i'd sit there talking to somebody and just turn and look at the stadium you're like man i cannot believe we're standing out here outside of this thing so yeah it's from the outside as far as the outside goes like i have those little complaints we talked about that's it and i think like uh like if people come by for the tailgate, I think we'll be better too. Like the, with weeks to come, like kind of game planning how we want to do it, how much room we're gonna have. They were they were cool with the with the the music. They didn't bust balls about that. Or um, they they were, the police officers were pretty cool, man. They yeah. wanted to make sure that if there was an emergency, obviously that people could drive through. Um, yeah. And you know we're pushing that definitely. Yeah. But uh, but for but for the most part, I think next week or next time we'll have a better idea of what we can and can't do entering we got to figure something out um as well maybe we'll actually split in between the, the lines maybe that's a better way to do it so just going one big line of, on the caravan but um i think we'll you know we'll have a better idea of what we could do and i think it'll be a little bit more it was fun this last time but i think we could do it even better So one thing we wanted to do was test out our live stream capabilities, which we did, and the timing was perfect. We had uh, Jesse Matthews' parents came by, and we got a chance to sit down and talk with each of them before they went into the stadium. So definitely check that out on our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter accounts. We're going to be live streaming our tailgate on 9-3. Don't get nervous, guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have some uh, people coming by for some interviews and even – even a surprise basketball player is going to stop by the tailgate. So that should be really cool to see. So definitely stop by definitely before 11 o'clock because a lot of people are going to be getting in early for all the festivities. So definitely before 11 o'clock at the tailgate. Some of the best stuff people said about Snapdragon Stadium was obviously the pier, right? The pier was was amazing, right? What'd you guys think of the pier when we first got up there and you felt it bouncing? Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. Again, it's kind of cool. You think of the pier, but you also get to see the backside where you go. To, you could kind of oversee where we were tailgating um, towards there, and it just—I mean—but the it's just so nice, and they did a really good job considering they let everybody in. I thought they let everybody in, but then people were saying they couldn't get up there. Um, but we got in because we at that time we had club seats, but she had mentioned everybody could go up there for this first game. And man, like the way that thing just moves as you're as you're standing on there, it's a it's a trip. You really hang, you are hanging over the crowd. Yeah. And I'd I'd love to be able to sit up there for for a whole game. It basically is pretty pretty much an all 22 view, man, from up there because you're kind of like that high above angle where you can just see everything develop underneath you. I think other than the peers, you know, a lot of people were talking about the food and all the drink options and, you know, all the different all the different nooks that you can go drink at and party and congregate with people together. 
I've been to a few different, you know, club levels in different stadiums. I mean, I know we don't have those normal seats, <laughs> but the the access to have that and to walk down into those areas to see the the club atmosphere that it was. I was on the scooter. I hit like five people on my way to that entrance, like on accident. I was clipping everybody's ankles, but um, then to see the team come out because we had walked out of that entrance out onto the field like you get that access to walk out on the field on the sideline you know we took we took some photos james was over there with the diamonds for for a, a little minute which was really cool but then we come back in and the team comes from behind that that garage door type of to the locker room entrance man i can't imagine on week one when the team is actually geared up all the fans are out there you just hear all the fans in their seats in the stadium. It was kind of cool at first, like the players are banging on the door and that was like, like getting you pumped up. That was cool. Like they're ready to go. Um, and that's, that, there's nothing like that that I've seen in, in college sports, man. That's, that's gotta be up there. Yeah. I, I, and I think like on a game day, they're probably gonna beat the crap out of that door even more, you know, like it's gonna be like crazy. Like, cause it's cool that they're all pounding on it before they walk out. And everybody's all like, all the fans are all nuts. But another cool aspect is once they run out, or even I guess before they run out, um, you could go to that area right out front. It lets you walk basically right on the field. It was, I mean, it's awesome. You could take some cool pictures there. You get right on the, you're literally right on the field. Yeah, you're, um, you're, you're basically on the sideline behind the Aztec bench, man. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, it's like you're not, I can't, you can't imagine having more access to a football team. Um, so yeah, no, that was, it was cool. We spent a good amount of time out there just kind of hanging out on that part, you know, just taking it all in, looking at, I mean, like, if you look at the pier from that angle, it was awesome, you know, cause you actually see it just hanging off the, the side. Uh, so yeah, man, I, I really enjoyed, I was lucky to get those seats. Maybe I could get one, another game later this year, but, um, it was, it was fun to, they have that area downstairs is so huge man like looks like they have a little grocery store um <laughs> a place to get little snacks uh they had plenty of bartenders good options on like their signature cocktails uh they give oh yeah they give you the uh aluminum cup for the for the beers and then they give you the plastic but looks glass uh for the cocktails which you could take both of them you could take them home um it was just they did they did everything right you didn't see really any shortcuts down there yeah i think definitely the area is called like the cox cox pavilion or cox field yeah, club or something like that right um, right yeah you owe yourself it. if you can afford it to buy season tickets there or by hook or by crook if you can get a hold of some tickets there you owe it to yourself to at least do one game there and then once you do have the seats right they're all cushioned they're all re- like the best seats you're gonna sit on, and there's some that even have like straight out recliners. At Aztecs forever with three V's and three R's. <laughs> <laughs> he said the best was the design and the feel of our new house that looks like it took more than two years to build awesome views from all the seats high-tech entry screening without having to empty your pockets into a bowl food and drink choices were all the best as well so a lot of a lot of positive feedback he made some good points on that or he made a good point on that about with how quickly they did the stadium and they did it with so much detail yeah like man i mean it's a pretty, pretty great feat, you know. I mean, it's really detailed. The little, all the little things they thought about. And then when you picture that COVID going on through that too, man, like, yeah, yeah, no, sure. what they yeah. did is, you got to tip your cap to to JD and the crew we put together to to put it put it together. That Clark Construction firm and and uh, uh, Gensler, I think, the architects, they all did an amazing job, man. They, they came out. It doesn't get it doesn't get much better than that, man. Our friends over at SDFNL Magazine on Twitter said it was like a brand new car. It smelled fresh. The food and the beer was great. 
and pretty much it was perfect. It was a perfect day. It's kind of a blur for me. We didn't really watch too much of the game. I mean, how could you? You know, we're there to watch everything else and <laughs> take in the sights and all the experiences. I wish I could have stayed and paid attention more to it, but there was just too much going on, too much excitement. And there's still areas I didn't get to go to. Toyota yeah. Terrace looked nuts. Yeah, that looks like a, a good spot to be at, man, at Toyota Terrace. Yeah. yeah. Like this. Okay, what did you guys think of State Ale, though? We didn't even talk about State Ale, dude. I oh. thought it was actually really good. It's fucking oh, good, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's great. Yeah, yeah. dude, it's like it, it has a feel of like a, a light beer, but with its own kind of unique taste. Yeah. You know, it has a little hop in there. Um, so, like, it's no, I, I, I really enjoyed it. You're not going to get bored with them. That's all I was drinking at Dance House, pretty much that. And then at the tailgate, that's pretty much all I was drinking. I mean, some people were saying, why would you waste it on an ale? Like, make it an IPA and all that Like, dude, uh, no you way. Can't, you can't get a school that's going to put a 6 or 7% <laughs> like alcohol out there. You know, it's like a bad, in my opinion, it's kind of like a bad look. You're not going to tailgate drinking an IPA like with six, seven, you know, you're not, you can only drink like a couple of those and you're, yeah. and you're good. You got to drink responsibly. The school's got like to send that message. Bro. And by the way, talking to the people at Elsmith, they're saying it's, it's just flying off the shelf. Oh, I bet. I never thought we would get here. Like, Okay, when, when Mission Valley, the fight for Mission Valley was going on, okay, well, that propelled us, right? Because you got something you're fighting for. But before that, I never thought that we would have our own stadium. Back when we were playing at the Qualcomm days, like, I just thought, this is it, you know, this is this is going to be it. Like, there wasn't any real prospects of building something on campus. You know, you'd see, like, the rumors and the renderings, like, sketches throughout the years, but never anything solid that you could say, okay, we're going to build something on campus. And now we got it. Now we got it. It's pretty, it's pretty surreal. I know. We would be all, like, we're so dorky, you know? Like, we'd be all looking for areas where they could actually build the stadium. <laughs> like, let's just knock down Hardy Elementary. They don't need that. <laughs> yeah, they talk about knocking down some elementary school, knock dude how much how often did adobe falls come in to every conversation like it was just we were starving for a stadium so bad even before even uh before the the chargers left we talked about it all the time you know yep. yeah so that's why i don't think these like the media they knew what they were getting into when the fight for mission valley happened because we were ready to go years and years years before do we take the high ground then? Do, are we going to take the high ground for the rest of this year and moving forward? Like, are we going to let bygones be bygones and let let the soccer city stands out there who are, are probably still clutching on to their bitter feelings against the Aztecs and SDSU or or, or do the victor go to the spoils? Do we kind of enjoy this? Because I don't know, man. Saturday was a blur to me, but it was just the perfect day of celebration to just like breathe and exhale all of this you know and, and we're here we're moving in and there's nothing anybody could do about it I, okay. I i'd like to glow a little bit but it's all about how they are now you know because if you i mean you guys have kind of i guess mended the relationship with kusi a bit where to me at that time they were ember like enemy number two you know um and so but you have since talked to them. They're sitting there and they're, you know, they're like showing SDSU respect, the stadium respect. And if people are doing it like that, because even like, um, you know, maybe even Darren Smith and Marty or whatever, they're cool, dude. They, they're like, they're just, they're just, they're not playing the game. They're accepting it. They like the stadium, have great things to say. So as long as that, as long as like the adversaries have, are acting like that, then let bygones be bygones and just move on, you know? Yeah, me personally, I'm pretty much over. Like I spent Saturday before I passed out on Dan's patio. Um, I spent a lot of time like re like liking and retweeting uh, show alumni stuff, like going after all the old old tweets. <laughs> and that was kind of like my uh, my get it out of my system. Like I'm I'm over it now. Like we got our stadium. Who cares? Like I'm focused on the, this team and this how they're gonna do this year and enjoying the stadium. Um, yeah, if they want to, if they want to start up again, I'll, I'll respond. You know, I can't help myself. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a sucker for that. 
but you know, I'm, I, I'm over it. I'm not gonna, I'm, you won't be seeing any more tweets like that for me, I, I don't think, but <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I'd, lo- I'd love to like just talk all about the Mission Valley, but you know we attempted to do that the other week in Dan's yard, and uh, yeah, that was an interesting conversation. <laughs> do you remember that, James? Do you remember the, that conversation we had back there? Yeah. Come on, bro! I wasn't drunk until the end. <laughs> <laughs> Dan was on a good one. <laughs> well, Rebar brought his bottle of bourbon, dude. Was- oh yeah. <laughs> I was drinking it like a G, like an old cowboy out west. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, was, he was reliving some Yellowstone shit. Yeah, yeah. That's what I always think about when I'm like drink, drinking like a whiskey and like in a glass, you know, in a glass with no ice, just sipping on it like a champ. <laughs> like, a, like a real man, like a man's man, you know? <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, the greatest singer either. No, and he, but he never wanted. You loved him though. But I did. I, I still do. I still do. But here's the thing, though: the old stadium was there for over 50 years, dude. So like that meant a lot to everyone in San Diego, not just Aztecs fans. It meant something to Padres fans, Aztecs fans, Charger fans, if I can say that word. Mm-hmm. James, you were season ticket holder for the Chargers, dude. Yeah. So like you know that that building meant a lot to the whole of San Diego County. The Chargers treated the Aztecs terribly. Like, I remember my dad saying they wouldn't even let us, us, meaning San Diego State, have a box office there to sell tickets. Like, that's ridiculous if you think about it. It kicked me in the nuts. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. It did. It hurt. I'm not charged for Dude, The, the Chargers, when they beat Pittsburgh in the AFC Championship, that was on my birthday. No way. And coming back to the stadium... To the stadium after that game and just the parade of people there. Yes, like, it, was, it was awesome, that's right? That's a part of my childhood. Dude, you know I, mean? I went to that stadium. Yeah. I went in the rain. Yeah. I sat in view <laughs> to walk and or watch Dan Humphreys mm-hmm. talk about beating the Steelers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So to, sometimes I feel like Aztec fans get characterized of, oh, we're only Aztecs. We don't care about San Diego. We don't. Dude. Yeah. That's nonsense. Yeah. yeah. That Charger stuff killed me it really killed me and i know there's some people that were happy to see him go for right. whatever reasons may but for me my, myself it hurt man it really hurt for me it was uh it was a little different because i had come to the re- realization that they were going to move mm-hmm. like i i knew like i knew it they telegraphed it basically 10 years before when they had uh, their fall camp in uh carson Corona, yeah. Or carson, oh, yeah. yeah 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 and carson that was kind of like the, the telegraph of what was coming. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like, oh, no, that's not true. But then fast forward to like probably like 2014, 2015 or so, that was the last year I had season tickets. And I realized like this team, they're not trying to do anything better to, to help the situation in San Diego. When I heard the story that we've talked about many times about how San Diego State wanted to upgrade the scoreboard, the, the scoreboard yeah, at yeah. Qualcomm. And the Chargers basically said, no, F off. <laughs> and the city was like, well, you know, they're the main tenant, so like they, they're not, they don't want to do it, so it's not going to get done. And that that was like the breaking point for me. So I was like, right then, I was like, I'm not supporting this team anymore. So I canceled my season tickets, and um, I kind of just uh, like cut myself off from them. Like from that point, it was like a slow like when they start to lose, I'd kind of laugh more than like be upset when they would lose. It was expected, like that. yeah. So it. it I, it was like a slow trickle, and then finally, when they finally did cut the cord, I was pre- like mentally prepared for it. I still had rosy glasses at the time. I'm like, dude, let's try to be like Seattle and have like a killer stadium for the Aztecs. Yeah, something great for the Chargers. Damn, like we can do this. Let's aspire to more. But clearly, you saw the writing on the wall. You knew, and it got oh, ugly. Dude. I mean, it yeah. just did. It was one of those things that it was. They didn't want to be here. The Aztecs clearly were trying to do better. They, mm-hmm. they, when I was at school at State, they were just bad. Like, I'd go to games, and <laughs> it was bad. Like, I'd watch them, like, are they trying to play football? I'm not really even sure. But at that uh, time, they were good. Like, they, they were a team, like, the athletic department was investing. They were performing. 
And it was like, yeah, this team needs something because this stadium is not going to get it. And, you know, people were saying like, oh, the Chargers are gone. The Aztecs should just use the queue. It's got memory. Dude, I've got great memories of Qualcomm yeah. from, you know, watching the Beach Boys at Padres games to Pink Floyd concerts Dude. to Charger <laughs> games. You, know, you name it. Like, I've got great memories there. Dude, I was so happy when they raised it. Like, yeah. it just, it was done. It, it was it need to be put out of its misery, and we've got something so much better now. Dude, if you people remember, the the assets were willing to support and buy in to the Chargers relocation yeah. in Mission Valley. Yeah, like yeah. they yeah. they wanted to be a part of it. They could have been a part of it, something yes. like like what that's you what were Hirschman. saying. Yeah, Hirschman was like, "Hey, SKSU, oh, that's, we're going to throw in money." That's a, that's, that's a, a whole, whole other, other yeah. chapter, right? That's there. a whole other chapter, and, and then he and disappeared. Four part series, four <laughs> part series, four part series, <laughs> and that uh. That, <laughs> Bringing up Hirschman and and our boys from uh, Aztecs killing him, yeah. killing him, got me started on that earlier. I forgot <laughs> how lucky we are that that guy was pushed out of the door. I, wow! The word I heard is that he was pushed out of the door to take that other oh, job. Of course. Oh yeah. Well, well, can we can we just bring in the first character of the saga and as Jack McGrory? Oh yeah. I mean, dude, it begins and ends with Jack yeah. McGrory. I mean, I I didn't really know that name that name was always associated with what the the, the ticket guarantee, the ticket guarantee, guarantee, guarantee yeah. all that stuff right so if there was anybody who made things happen for aztecs getting that property and and what we're seeing now I mean, it's jack mccrory too he's just a leader that's the way he is and that's why he's so de- de- divisive really right. i mean people love him hate him yep but you know he's a guy that i had been associated with and you know been familiar with the whole thing gets started you know we're splitting from Soccer City. We're getting this movement going. And I get this invite to go to the La Jolla Tennis Club. Yeah, yeah. Where Joel comes along with me and we go <laughs> in. And we realize we don't really belong. <laughs> you know, you've got you know, Barbara Bree there. you got uh, Jack. All these other folks that have got like more money than I'll ever see in my life. I went to one of those. <laughs> yeah. It was surreal. And Jack gets up and he makes... He preaches like he, yeah. he he testifies, and everybody's like, "Yep, this is where we're going." Because he saw it like up front, he saw it. we're not getting anywhere with Soccer City. We need to do our own thing, and yeah, that's and that's one, and the one of the guy. things that San Diego State lacks is we lack voices like Jack McGlory. Yeah, we don't have enough movers and shakers. We really don't. Well, apparently not. I'm gonna not even say apparently. <laughs> we don't have enough. We don't and. He made things happen. So we 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 heard those radio interviews that Jack McGorry put on on our yeah. sport AM the radio Kaplan stations, and all those guys. where he destroyed people. Yeah, <laughs> and and even when we're talking, th- this is this this is being recorded in in a time where we're trying to get in the Pac-12 right now, and the one person I'm hoping that is yeah. kind of managing this yeah. is Jack McGorry. Absolutely, <laughs> because I. He has some balls, and he, ha- he he's going to push it. He's going to make some things happen. We could have made it work with the Chargers. Absolutely. So it, didn't, it absolutely. never had to be one or the other. You know? No, no, absolutely. And I, and I don't think Jack McGorry. I think Jack McGorry at the time, or us at the time, and all of our fans and boosters at the time, like, dude, we can make this work. I will, you build that stadium for the Chargers, we will dude, make it work. I will, to my dying day, I will always believe that there could have been a structure built for the Chargers, for the Aztecs, yeah. for MLS, and it would have been amazing. Oh. Everybody could have had what they wanted, but what was the key factor there that didn't want San Diego? The Chargers. The, Chargers. the Spanos. They didn't want seen, San Diego in general. They after seeing it. Allegiant Stadium, yeah. we could have had that. Yes. It would have it charges. wouldn't have been the ultimate, you know what I mean? But everybody could have been appeased. Better. But it would it would have been better. It would have been fine though. Like no, why would it have been better? Because it'd be San Diego. Exactly. <laughs> you talking about Super Bowl <laughs> cities? Everybody talks about San Diego. Bar none is yeah, best. Yeah. Miami, New Orleans. Yeah. But San Diego, everybody time and again says, "Oh, best Super Bowl city." <laughs> one, one thing I do want to throw out there. Yeah. Can we just take a moment to appreciate that it's amazing we have a stadium right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we, we saw what happened with Petco and all the delays that went on. We saw all of the the pushback from different people, and you know, the canard through the whole election was, yeah. they'll never get it done. They'll never get it done. Lawsuit, Dude, lawsuit. It's done. It's, it's done. opening. <laughs> I, I don't want to say underrated, but maybe under, 
like kind of like the, the old sleeping giant thing, man. Like there's a there's a lot of political will behind San Diego State. There's a lot of financial will behind San Diego State, but they're kind of like sleepy. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. But cool. I mean, like, I think that in that sense, it was an easy it was an easy thing, right? We're back in education. Yeah, yeah. like we're growth. It's it, and I remember like Scott Sherman seeing an art, uh, <laughs> our interview afterwards. Which we can't forget, Sean Scott Sherman, right? Oh my God! Dude. And we can't forget how great Barbara Bry was. We can't forget how great Barbara Bry was. Barbara Bree. Yeah. Bree. 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 Say always, your name. Say your name I always correctly. Fuck that up. I always fuck it up. Say her name, bitch. <laughs> no, but dude, and like, so we gotta remember our allies, and we gotta. Remember, oh yeah, dude. But, dude, I mean, like. I don't even know where I was going with it. Now. No, no, that's that's great. That's great. I mean, but it really shows how. This city was put in just such a position after the Chargers left. Like, dude, we all wanted the same thing, really, when it comes down to it. But when the Chargers left, it left everybody in this just messed up state where we all, like, wanted our own things. San Diego State, like, had the plan that encompassed the best. But everybody still had their own ideas of what a San Diego post chargers should be there was rumors that rocky rocky long staff was showing recruits like renderings of a stadium i remember you mentioned that like we're gonna play yeah. in this stadium like this is what's whatever happens with the chargers this is gonna be our new stadium like they were already like selling it to recruits and stuff i, I heard this secondhand so maybe it could be wrong but this that's what i heard and it kind of lines up with like yeah. not too long after that like so once the chargers leave I take that back. Like a couple days before the Chargers leave, the soccer guys started releasing rumors and renderings of supposedly a new stadium in case the Chargers leave. Um, that DK guy, he started releasing stuff on their like soccer. Well, dude, we got first off, we got to highlight James, dude. We got to give James all the credit in the world <laughs> because James stepped into the lion's den. <laughs> James went in on the Kept Faith podcast. No, that was oh. during. That was during it. That was later. No, that, I know. That was I, later. I understand, yeah. but he documented all what he's saying now. He put that on the record with yeah. those guys before anybody was out there talking about yeah. any of no, this dude, kind of stuff, dude. James, one of the one things I'll say about James, he's always been so plugged in on this mm -hmm. to where James make me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me something I want to hear. Tell me something I want to hear. Massage my back a yep. little bit. Yep. Whisper in my ear. I gotta Just confirm this with K five, dude. I gotta confirm this. And, and and one of the things about James is he always comes through. Yeah. Like James, when I go to stadium and I go to conference realignment and all that type of stuff, James is my go-to <laughs> guy. Can't lie. I always thought K five meant. The parking area of, of the Aston. <laughs> Who knew it was a damn Bronco or a Chevy, Chevy I mean, Blazer or whatever the hell it is? Where do we take it from there? Where do we okay. take it from there? Um, so we were talking about... Uh, we haven't even got to the vote. We haven't no, even got... No, we haven't we even, no, 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 there's I'm plenty saying, to talk about. There's okay, so... About. We haven't even got to them showing up at that damn fucking... Hold in on. the ocean. What? On the Midway? On, on the, the Midway. midway. Oh, we haven't even got to that. Okay, so hold on. Yeah. So hold on. So okay, so we talked about like uh, how we felt when we got the news... Yeah. Like we were expect like I, I kinda like had an idea that San Diego State was working with some soccer group. Yeah, yeah. Um I remember getting a survey in the email. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like take That's a survey, right. how did you feel? How do you about feel about soccer yeah. and this and that? Oh, there God. was even like I a little rendering too. for yeah. that too. Dude, I remember that too. I, yeah. I was I all about it. Thing. Yeah. And it's and it made sense at the time. Like, okay, Absolutely. cool. Let's have some let's work with somebody yeah. and do something. We wanted to, to fill this void, if you would. Yeah. Just like I think Everybody wanted what was best for San Diego, so it's like cool. This this makes so, sense. The plan I had always heard, it involved JMI. It was going to be JMI was going to buy the site, <laughs> and they were going to make money building all the buildings for San Diego State. That's how they're going to get their money yep. back and more. Yep. Like they, JMI was going to buy the site, donate it to San Diego State, which is a tax write off, and then make money building all the buildings for San Diego State and the stadium. That's what I understood the plan to be. And so when they started talking about all these like soccer groups negotiating with San Diego State, I was like, oh, that's JMI. Moores must be buying a soccer club. Like uh, he's starting an MLS club. And that's what I assumed was going down. So I was like, hell yeah, I was mm -hmm. excited for that. That's yeah. that like. So I remember watching that, that 
telecast or that news report or the whatever the hell it was. All right, Nick with Nick Stone uh, in the front. Uh, uh, Nick Stone. The announcement. The announcement. And I think he mentioned a lot. If if I remember correctly, I think he mentioned about he assumed the San Diego State, right? I think he mentioned, oh, we're going to build a stadium for San Diego State, whatever four. it was. And, uh, f- yeah, for San Diego State. <laughs> and I remember afterwards, I actually text uh, James. I was like, is this a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> and know what James said? And he's like, I'm not sure yet. Mm. And James is an idealist. James, I would have thought James had said, like, oh, yeah, this is great. It's a great opportunity. I got the... I don't know yet. Yeah. Mm, yeah. At, so at that point, I'm like, okay, what what is he seeing? What's what are we not going? And, well, and you didn't see any San Diego State officials. Yes. Yeah. They tried. They tried really? to cram that San Diego. State. How do you say we're building it for them? We're doing this for them, and, and you don't have they, not one, yeah. not a professor, not a you know, not even a, a librarian, not, not even nothing. a mascot. Not the- <laughs> <laughs> nothing there. But we all remember it, right? Oh, like yeah. We, we all picture Nick Stone there, and we're like, we don't know if we should be elated. Yeah. Like, yeah. everybody was Stock just... Talking into sports radio. All well, Darren Smith 10 was 90. there, right? Yeah, Darren all Smith 10 was there. Darren Smith was there. Yeah. Master of ceremonies, yep. dude. Yeah. Yep. So, I'm a big fan. I enjoy his show. D. Smith was good. Right? Yeah. Big supporter of San Diego State sports, right? You would think. Basketball. Basketball. I think Darren Smith... In the, in the grand scheme of things, likes San Diego State. And I think he likes what's best for San Diego State. But he is dealing with his passion. Yeah. yeah. No, what's his absolutely. passion? Soccer. Soccer. And and that's why Football. that's yes. why I don't really give him much grief to this day because I, I kind of saw that. Yeah. And I think he played his cards very wisely compared to like a Kaplan. No, yeah. dude. Or yeah, somebody no, up no, in the media. Me like. Oh. He I'll played drill. his cards <laughs> very well, even though he was all in on Soccer City. Like, he didn't allow it to completely, like, be boisterous about it in a certain way that, like, like a Kaplan was. Yeah, yeah. It makes you think, how much work did they do yeah. before? Yeah. Like, how many? Oh, yeah. But here's the thing, though. Even Scott Lewis recognized, like, hey, they're reaching out to everybody but San Diego State. Yeah. And, yes. and he recognized, even at the time, like, they're not going to get anywhere without SDSU. Yeah, they yeah. were trying to get they were trying to get all the media on their side, which they did yeah. a pretty good job of. Yeah, one of the um, things is I think that that they uh, underestimated was San Diego State's pool, right? Absolutely. Who was that one former councilman who got in trouble for that? For that Cheetah Gate thing or whatever. Oh, I loved him. He was my voice but, of reason at that he, time. He dropped so many. <laughs> but he like talked about how all the San Diego media is like. Um, Souls. Soul. Uh, what do pocket. you call it? Uh, it incestuous. Was, He's like, San Diego media is so incestuous. Incestuous. Like, they're, they're married to yeah. like the big movers and shakers are married to like anchors. I think a central theme we're going to see over and over again is the fact that, yeah, San Diego's a big city. Like 28 DMA and all that stuff. It's still a small town. Like, yeah. it really is. I mean, I always tell students that, like, hey, you can't do anything wrong because everybody's going to know about it for a long time. And it's true. I mean, San Diego, top to bottom, there's not that much distance. I mean, you, you can you can meet the mayor easy. I mean, yeah. Todd Gloria. <laughs> the mayor. I mean, I Let's get into the mayor. <laughs> so, I'm not going to talk about Faulkner, but say, you know, Gloria, I don't agree, you know, politically I'm different. Dude's a great guy. You know, I've met him and I'm, I'm nobody. Like I'm no guy, you know, San Diego is a small town. And I think that's one of the things that got missed. You cut San Diego state out, like yeah. a foundational pillar of this, of this city. And you think you're going to get something done. Dude, you're deluding yourself. Good luck. Ain't going to happen. <laughs> you're, you're just primed. And that's what we saw. There were people that were talking about at the time that, when the Chargers were thinking of leaving, that the mayor, Kevin Faulkner, had already had a relationship with Soccer City. It was day, it was like the next week yeah, after dude, the Chargers left. Yeah, it was days after left. they already had, they were li- releasing the renderings and shit. Yeah. And then following weeks, it was like a drinking event at Stone Brewery and, and you know, 
what was uh, Liberty Station? Liberty, like yeah. they they had unveilings of all kinds of stuff. Footy McFooty Face was yeah. there. Oh, like, God, don't bring up. They Footy were they were face. already polling people what the name of the team should be. Like it was just. They, they were like, wait, you did that over the weekend? They what? got that ball right. rolling like, fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was so, before the Chargers. So the wheels fast. are already spinning. Yeah. yeah, but on the midway, that means they had they already had. They already had conversations with San Diego State, right? They did. Supposedly. Yeah, they did. Yeah, so they did. Looking back, they did. They did. Yeah. Like, we know it. Absolutely. They didn't agree with those conversations. Uh, well, well and Hirschman. They, Hirschman, and, and and Hirschman yeah, may dude. have agreed with them. Yeah. And looking back. I, I won't. I, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There, there were some other people watching out that yeah. said, yeah. this is dude, not. Do you think? Yeah. Dude, yeah. Dude, so, but what? So, so all this came about after uh, Nick Stone on the Midway. Yeah. 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 Oh, so, absolutely. So, after Nick Stone on the Midway... They dropped their plan. They finally showed the plan. Like we've been talking, like okay, where, what's what's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? Relax you're, you're saying you're saying you're gonna take care, of, like you're gonna build the stadium for San Diego State. It's gonna be this great thing. Well, let's let's see the details. I'm enough of a loser where I had the time to <laughs> read through that whole freaking initiative, and I was like, wait a second. I saw a lot of stuff. There was a lot of legalese, but there's a lot of stuff. I was like, wait a second. This doesn't this doesn't say what they're talking about. Like, but and also. Dude, we can't forget. San Diego State did release a statement, right? They said, mm. we haven't determined if this is a great fit for us. They basically backed away from they the Soccer City uh, Dam. They hedged. Yeah, yeah. yeah really early. Because they felt, I think they felt pressure from the media and the fans. and Like, hey, what are we doing here? Like, we all assumed San Diego State was in step. But yeah. they backed away. Yep. And they said something to the, in the effect of, you know, we got to read through this. I think we got to look through this. We got to yeah. look through this. But that's when it dawned on us, like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> dude, this is, uh, this is, dude, this, this is. This might get interesting. Yeah, dude, this is it. They're not towing, they're not in step like they thought. Like, and that's another thing, too, is, like, they weren't even trying to go to a ballot. They were trying to get the shit just. Uh, you can't get right. that yet. They were just yeah. trying to rubber. <laughs> too, too soon, brother. Too soon, brother. He was soon. the front. But really, it wasn't just Nick Stone. Well, no, right? Nick Stone was just the face. Yeah. Yeah. The, the where, were the mo- where was the money? The big okay. money was Peter Seidler. The, the yeah. biggest money was the other Stone, Mike Stone. Yes. Yeah. Mike Stone was the one. And, and James made a good point recently where you go to that website now. Yo, it's so. dog shit. It looks like it's like uh, Sonny and it was never there. Yeah. yeah. But, well, I mean, you talk yeah. about, like, what was your thoughts? I mean, I saw the renderings. You know, I saw the initiative. And at first, I was like, okay, this could be cool. Yeah. But as I kept looking at everything, I'm like, it's a soccer stadium. Yeah. Everything I saw, mm-hmm. there was nothing. nothing about SDSU. It was, it Great was point. just, it was just the same thing over again. Like, okay, so we're taking our football program and stepping down from <laughs> the tombstone of Qualcomm, an NFL stadium, an old NFL to stadium, to this rinky-dink MLS stadium where they it's there's no red, no black, no low, like nothing. Remember Great they point. came Great out with they came out with a red and black rendering version of it after the blue. <laughs> yeah. and then they, but dude, can you imagine if they would have won? That one was like it would have been the, whittled down to I don't like know if a, the football program survives. Dude, period. It would have been whittled down to under twenty. Like twenty two. Yeah. You're talking about expansion. We would have had not Look, even a no, according, according to the initiative, that stadium was going to be like 22,000 seats, if I recall correctly. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they would have knocked it down every single time we, we would have gone longer without agreeing. They would have pegged it down, pegged it down. Like, dude, we would have no chance in this expansion. We're, we're even pondering the about conference right expansion. Like, yep. No yep. way. If I remember correctly, we had like Fred Pierce and yeah. other uh, San Jose people. Yeah, big time, big time. Fighting against at City Council. Yeah. Oh, Fred well, Pierce was the Yeah, man. there's three guys. So you had Fred Pierce, uh, Jack McGrory, and Steve Doyle. Those were the three yeah. guys that got in, read the initiatives, and went to the university and just said, you, no, can't, you can't do this. No yeah. fucking way. Yeah. This will kill things like. Yeah. You, because they know special elections, not as many voters turn out, and it's yeah. a lot easier to manipulate a special the, election. The yeah. thing about a special election is, if you're passionate about it, mm. those are the voters that show up. Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. And that's what they got. I mean, they got a lot of really passionate soccer yeah. fans that yeah. were like, yeah. hey, this is a great thing. And well, we're like, yeah. No. <laughs> and, and we can't forget that like during this period, like, even though like there was no special election... 
we're still fighting the fight <laughs> on social media, right? So then you become like, like fighting the fight. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask someone. Let me ask Jeremy. Like, what? What made you want to fight the fight online? <laughs> wow, <laughs> dude, that's a great question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, there's a lot. Yeah, I mean, wow. I mean, I love San Diego State. I honestly, I've got so much good stuff for my life from the university. Like, I have made a point since I graduated to continue to give back. To Like, I just, I'm invested in the university. Me and my wife both are just thankful awesome. for the education we got. Awesome. And this was literally a generational, once-in-a-lifetime yes. opportunity. And so it really was an opportunity to say, okay, I can't do a lot, but I can take my... 36 followers, whatever the hell it was at the time, <laughs> and be like, I'm going to put forward everything I can to try to push this side of the narrative because I'm passionate about it. I think it's, and honestly, I just felt like it was the right thing to do. It's public property. Yeah. What can we do in the best interest of the city, of future generations, public education? Let's go. Not give it to some private entity to, to just monetize for yes. condos. And maybe, and probably, I'll give it to them, probably an MLS club, but, I mean, whatever. I yeah. mean, they'll move in another 12 years, whatever. I After the Chargers, I was just kind of done with the whole pro sports thing. Let's talk about the media. I think, in, in general, we felt, at the time, I'm not, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, the media was against the San Diego State initiative. Oh, hands down. It does feel like the whole media was, and I, I like we mentioned it before. New Soccer City was out there early. They had, they were placing their bets that if they they were first, you know, first to get it, everything was just gonna roll, and the cars were just gonna fall, and the Chargers left, and they were just gonna roll right in with this mm-hmm. plan. They were gonna save San Diego State, which is ridiculous when you look back on it now because San Diego State is not like this isolated little college. No. You know, it's not like this college up on the Mesa. They're part of a whole Cal State system. Yes. So for them to place so much money to thinking that they could just, you roll, know. Roll over. Same yeah. Thing yeah. It's, it's like these guys appeared to be so smart, but it was the dumbest bet you could All ever All they take. had to do is come to agreement with. I, and you know what's weird is I don't think San Jose State was playing that much of a hard line they at that weren't. point. They weren't. At they all. weren't. I think, dude, you you throw a good little bone out there. And we're <laughs> dude. The common theme with a lot of people on social media at that time was like the two plans are the same. Like, you know, they're so similar. Like, it's the same thing. It's just you know, <laughs> who was for saying a state? Who was against saying a state? It's like individual reporters and anchors and stuff that were alumni and like Mark Ziegler. Yeah, that's right. Which, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> but Ziegler in general was for saying a say. Yeah. But like, if you look at radio, right? What radio personalities Dude. were for saying a state? I mean, I mean, just look at across the board. I think not even just radio. Eventually got there. Eventually, Dude, but kind like, of. Even not hard. Like they no, were waffling. Everybody who was for Soccer City in the media. Is pretty much not around anymore. Oh yeah, <laughs> or they're <laughs> like Landon. Uh, lesser, I mean, can you that. understand how wow. big Landon is in the soccer community? Like, I, I, I don't, I don't hold those uh, soccer diehard soccer fans like that hard because, dude, he's the American like but, standard at that time, right? But don't you kind of, in a sense, feel like? We battled with Darren Smith. He hated us. We right? battled yeah. with Landon Donovan. No, yeah, he but himself. Darren, but but Darren Smith, he hated us, right? Yeah. We I, annoyed. I, 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 we I, annoyed I, the hell out of we, yeah. Lisa Remillard. She quit to go work for Soccer City. Right. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious. My <laughs> students for Soccer City that were actually dude, we're not, dude, by we Soccer can't City. Highlight but he was a thing, here's the thing. These kids, like we highlighted dude. them. That that city council when they went and spoke. And they totally tried to fillet San Diego State, and then Coach Horton just ripped them a new one right after. It was beautiful. Show I forgot that Horton opposite side. fucking went off on that. Oh, team. dude, yeah. I, I forgot about that. I made sure when I met him the other week. I was like, dude, we'll never forget what you did. But dude, we'll I never forget I, what you I, said. I, which is a side which note. Which was awesome. I think enough time has passed. You might need to put in a good word for me to have him <laughs> unblock me on Twitter. <laughs> 
Dude, that will never I happen, call. Rebar. <laughs> that will never, ever happen. Yeah. Yeah. Trick. Like, what was it? The San Diego... What was it DK had? The San the Diego Chronicle. Chronicle. Do you, I was one of the few guys yeah. that actually met some of these folks in person. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just say, DK is a nice guy. I, yeah. I enjoyed his company. What's his, what's his name? DK. His last name, though. I, I, oh, I, he's I, a good I, dude. Well, nice well, name, yeah. but, you know, he was always very transparent with me. Like, hey, this is my jam. Like, I'm all about soccer. So when I went to Europe and I saw some stuff, I came back and I wrote this whole article. I sent him, like, dude, yeah, if you're legit, post this. And he did. Like, he gave me some minor comments, but by and large, yeah. he posted what I wrote that was pro SDSU. Now, he got slammed for it. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, yeah. No, and I'll, I'll give you credit that, and, and I'll credit, like, the Kept Faith guys, is that they actually brought you on the platform, yeah. James. Those guys actually made room for the conversation. Yeah. They did. They brought I you mean, on. I come on. They brought I you on. I say that. Well, okay. I mean, but let's be yeah. honest. Like, they yeah. brought you on. They brought you on. Like, are they there? Are they in the... Are they here now? Well, of course not. They lost. <laughs> so one question I got to ask Matt. Yeah. How worried were you? Okay. Okay, so that's the, the big <laughs> question, right? <laughs> like, like, so say after SCSU opposes what Soccer City is initiating. Yeah. How worried were you? How worried was James? How worried was Jeremy? Like, how, how worried were you? Because I remember me being extremely worried. <laughs> I was worried enough to where I got really active, Dan, and you know what I'm talking about. I got real active. I got physical. We... I got physical, physical. Are we I, getting to that story? I'm not saying. I'm not saying I have fisticuffs with anybody. Not. It, it didn't get to that point. But I mean, you know, Sons of Montezuma. We started it as a ways of just disseminating information out there for the voter, right? Like, yeah, it's a cool brand. It stands for Aztec football, but really the thing was to get information out to the voters, dude. We held watch parties. We had all kinds of tailgates. Like, dude, we were just getting people together to vote. So, but, Jeremy, how, how worried were you? <laughs> how worried was I? I wasn't overly worried. Like, I didn't have this overwhelming feeling that we were going to lose. And my hope was, is what happened, that we kicked ass and... <laughs> 60% plus. Yeah. Uh, you can get 60% plus in anything in this country right now. That's so James, were you, not, were you worried I was, about... I was worried. And that's part of why I spent so much time <laughs> wasting time arguing with <laughs> bot 3212 <laughs> soccer city bullshit. I, I spent so much time arguing about that with people that really don't matter, but like I felt like Jeez. it needed to be out there. And so, yeah, I was really worried just because... You know, anytime anything goes to a vote, you never know how it's going to go, man. Like, that's, mm -hmm. who knows, man. And then, at, at that time, like, the plan hadn't fully coalesced yet behind SDSU West. Because you're talking about initially, right, when they first separated. Yeah, so there hadn't been, like, a plan fully formulated with SDSU West. So it was just, like, Soccer City had this big machine in motion ready to go. <laughs> and SDSU is trying to, like, oh, sh they, they kind of, like, caught with their pants down because... The previous president, you're, you're trying to let him off the hook, but he kind of had them sold down the road, yeah. like agreeing to everything. And thank God, Magori, um, Fred Pierce, Sa all those, Sally Roush. Sally Roush. Oh, oh, I forgot about her. Oh, Sally Roush. See, dude, I forgot about her. <laughs> you forgot about can we, her. Can okay, we, can we, can we, we, we have all shows. forgot yes. about her. Cheers to Sally Dude, Roush. we all <laughs> forgot about her. Sally. I wasn't drunk until the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a good time that that day, that summer afternoon in Dan's yard where we just kind of sat down with Rebar and, and let it all out and really dove into all the ins and outs of, of the battle that we've had. But I'm with you, man. We're, we're right here. The season's about to start. You know, I, I don't think about it often. So it's, you know, I'm ready for the games. I'm ready to, to look closely at this team and, it's 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 game week next week so take enjoy this week you know plan for the season and and let's get it going let's go and we'll have some more stuff to actually judge the stadium by on a real game like i want to see they had, this i always told matt this is a big thing for me is i want to see a dope player entrance <laughs> i want to i want it to be 
use some of the video screens, use some creativity, use some fireworks, you know, that type of stuff to like, get people pumped up for the game. We never had that at, at Qualcomm. So I want to see if there's something they could do to bring some energy to start the game. Dude, can you can you picture that on CBS, having CBS, the CBS camera guy in there as they're getting ready to come out, as before they, you know how they do their little hit before they go to commercial, before they go to the game. Oh man, I'm ready. And plus, dude, we got to wake up early. Yeah, yeah. We got a mimosa, mimosa tailgate and breakfast burrito. I mean, I mean, we don't have to wake up that early knowing that Mateo's, we're going to be end up waiting on Mateo for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm I'm gonna be dealing with this injury all season long, so it's it's just something I gotta get used to. But nine three, we're gonna have the live stream there at the tailgate, so everybody tune in. If you're not gonna be there at the game, shame on you. But I know things happen, so if you're not, then definitely tune in. We'll give out more details as the week comes comes to fruition there. But we'll be live streaming at the tailgate to give everybody a chance to see exactly what we're seeing. And so a lot of good feedback on our YouTube about that. So definitely go like and subscribe there today. You can check it out. Until next week, when we break down Arizona and take a closer look at the Wildcats. The Wildcats. I was going to say Bearcats. <laughs> yeah, I still don't get that bear down thing. Man, so. All right, this is Mateo San Diego signing off. K5 James. That was a good one. <laughs> I'm stoked. Let's do it. Go Aztecs. <laughs> Dirtball Dan. Peace. <laughs> He's still dehydrated. <laughs> Can't think of anything clever. Until next week, sonsofmontezuma.com. Go Aztecs.